Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. First, though, I'd like to give a brief message to mothers of growing children. Do those youngsters of yours keep running in and out of the house asking for something to eat? Now, of course they do. It's only natural. They get hungry with all their activity. Now, I suggest that you treat them to a couple of Horlicks malted milk tablets now and then. They like Horlicks tablets, and Horlicks tablets certainly are fine for them. They satisfy, but don't interfere with appetite. They build and nourish, too. Contain all the nourishment of Horlicks in powder form. Get a package from your druggist and try the Horlicks in-between meals plan for your youngsters. You'll find other uses for the tablets, too, when motoring and golfing and on shopping trips. Horlicks tablets come in two flavors, either natural or chocolate. You'll like them both. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Dick Huddleston explained to Lum why Abner had been taking the money from the circus, Lum has been trying to see Abner and explain to him that he's no longer mad at him. Abner hasn't forgotten the threats that Lum made last week about what he was going to do to him when they met, and has therefore been keeping his distance. Well, yesterday, they devised a plan of locking Abner in the store in order that Lum might explain. But... Abner dived through a plate glass window and made his escape. Lum has written Abner a letter, assuring him that there's no hard feelings. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Grandpappy Spears down at the Jot 'em Down store. Listen. There comes Abner out there in front, Lum. Yeah, well, I reckon he got my letter. Yeah, I read him last night and told him I weren't mad no more. Told him I wanted to see him. And then he's he's all bandaged up there. Yeah, I figured he must have got cut up some, diving through that plate glass window the way down. Yeah, it's a thousand wonders that never killed him. He just did right through it. Oh, he was scared. Yeah, we've got some plate glass insurance on them windows, but I don't know whether that killed us an accident like that or not. Well, I don't believe that was an accident, Lum. I, I believe he just jumped through there on a purpose. Yeah, that's right. May as well forget about that, I reckon. Then it looks like we can carry more insurance not to never have the right kind to protect us with of anybody I ever seen. I never thought about nobody jumping through them windows. Oh, he must have been scared so bad he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, I'm sorry I ever threatened to give him a licking in the first place. Just look at him there. Makes me feel downright shame of myself seeing him all bandaged up that way. Yeah, his woman, Elizabeth, told Charity last night that he weren't hurt at all. She called up to see how he's getting along. Well, she must have just misunderstood Charity. He's bound to be hurt or he wouldn't have all them bandages on. Well, howdy, Abner. Howdy, man, howdy. Come in, Abner, come in. And I sort of thought you'd be down here long, and I just want to ask if you meant what all you said in that letter. Why, sure I meant it. Come on in. Don't have to stand back there in the door. No, well, I'm ain't mad, Abner. Well, I, I'm sure proud to hear it. I, I'm tired of dodging you. <laughs> and I reckon I can take these bandages off, man. No, no, I wouldn't take them off, Abner. Oh, it, it don't hurt, no. <laughs> I just put them on there a while ago. <laughs> just put them on a while ago. Yeah, see, I, I figured if I lock myself all up in bandages and come down here to see you and... I, I never knowed whether you'd be mad or not, and I knowed if I looked like I was crippled that you wouldn't jump on me, so well, I rocked myself all up. <laughs> for goodness sake, that bound for you. Yeah. I just allowed you to hurt bad. Oh, no. If no. you'd have just listened to me, I could have told you. I ain't been mad since I found out how come you to take the money from the circus. Well, Cedric told me that you said you was going to whoop me regardless of why I done it. Well, I might have said that, but that's before I found out how come you to do it. When I learned you saved us $800, I couldn't be very mad. Well, now, that's the only reason I've done it. And I'm sure proud to hear you say that, too, Lum. I tell you, it, it ain't a very nice feeling knowing that your your partner thinks you're a thief. Well, to be right honest about it, Abner, I ain't been happy myself. I never spent a lonesome week in my life. I want to apologize for anything I said I oughtn't to, and I want us to just shake hands and be friends. Well, fine. <laughs> well. We'll just forget about the whole thing. Uh, uh, forget about it. Yeah, we just won't bring it up no more now. Well, uh, 
I, I don't much want to come forget about it, Lum. You know, I I want to make up and all that, but half of that money belongs to me, and I don't want to forget about that. Oh, yeah, sure, the money. Well, yeah, we'll divide that. I paid off all the bills, and according to my account, we've got $1,640 left. Well... We're profits in the circus business. Well, fine, good. Now, you fellas, excuse me for butting in, but you've got business to talk over there, and I believe I'll take this order of groceries over to Sister Simpson before she calls up for it again. <laughs> now, just you'll stay here in the store, Lum, till I get back. Yeah, sure, go ahead, Grand Bap. I'll look at everything. Yeah, uh, uh, what you gonna do now, Lum? Just run the store here? Yeah, I reckon so. I don't know nothing else I could get into. Well, I don't either. I reckon I could just take my part of that money that we made and sort of retire myself, but I'd love to get into some kind of business if I could or to study up something to do. Some kind of business? Yeah. I know if I stay up around the place there while I... Elizabeth will work me to death in the field there. Yeah. <laughs> now, I'd rather get into some kind of a business where I won't have to work so hard if I could. Mm -hmm. Now, what you got in mind doing? Anything in particular? Well, no. I ain't made up my mind. I've been turning a bunch of things over in my head. It seems like there's something wrong with everything I want to go into. Yeah. I thought some about uh, putting in some kind of eating place here in Pine Ridge. Eating place? Yeah, you know, Elizabeth's got an awful reputation around the county here for her cooking, you know. Oh, yeah, Elizabeth's such a good board, I know that. Yeah, well, of course, it'd be a little bit hard on her. She's got her field work to do and all that, you know. And I first thought I'd put in one of them cafeteras, you know. That's what I had in mind to do, something a little different. Put in a what? Uh, one of them, them uh, cafeterias. You know, like we've seen over at Greenwood when we were at the circus, we ate there twice. Oh, cafeteria, yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know. I don't like them places to eat. Oh, it's awful handy now. Well, I know, but they charge me too much there. Charge you too much? Yeah. Well, I thought they had right reasonable price. Well, I didn't know, see, how they charged it first, and I went through that. I thought it was sort of family style, and I loaded up that uh, pan they give me, and... Granny, there's two dollars and eighty six cents worth of stuff. Oh, well, you never know they charged everything separate, huh? Why no? <laughs> well, I do know. <laughs> and the next time I went through, after I found out what they done, why I might not starve myself to death. Yeah, well, somebody's got to watch that core. But me and Elizabeth got to talking it over and we decided Sister Simpson got that boarding house of hers and then Luke Spear and his woman got their place here and we yeah. just decided we couldn't make no money out of it. Yeah, folks around here all eat at home anyway. Yeah. And then I decided to put in a picture show. Picture show? Now, in Pine Ridge? Yes, sir. I could sit and look at them all day. Yeah, and you'd more than likely be the only one sitting and looking, too. Well, I don't know. Now. There'd be some other folks there, but... Well, I never knowed nothing about how I go about getting them, and so I got there studying around, and I decided maybe it'd be better for me to put in a barber shop. Something I knowed something about. You don't know nothing about barbering? Well, no, I don't, but Elizabeth does. She cuts my hair all the time and does just as good a job as Mold Moose does. Oh, woman barber. Now, wouldn't that look funny? Elizabeth Peabody, barbarian and the shampooist. Well, it'd look all right if I could get her to do it, but she said she just set her foot down. She wouldn't budge it. She never had time. She had to put in a crop, and she just never had time to do Why, that. Folks ain't going to let her set no crop on their head and cut around the edge of it, no way. Well, no, I reckon not. And then uh, she stopped on the laundry business, too. I want to put in a laundry, but she said she just had all the washing she could tend to now. Why, of course she has. She so does. I don't know what I can get into, Harvey. I'll sort of like to be a lawyer myself, sort of like to want to. Lawyer? Yeah, law business. You don't know nothing about the law business, have you? Well, I don't have to. Don't have to? Well, I know I can buy some of them books, all them lawyer fellas. When you ask them something, they always got to look it up in the book. They don't know nothing themselves. Yeah, but you wouldn't even know where to look it up at. Well, I might not. No, I, I'd give up the law idea. Of course, this would be a good place to put in a garage here. If we had any cars here in Pine Ridge, just got them too. They don't stay broke much of the time. No, I don't believe it'd be much of a change there. Oh, but I wished I had me a railroad train. That's what I'd love to have. A railroad train? Yes, sir, right from here to the county seat. Well, it'd be a good idea, but, lo me, you ain't got enough money for that. You... Well, I've got over $800. Yeah, but a railroad outfit costs two or $3,000, Abner. It Which, does? Why, well, of course it does. Well, I, well, I reckon I might as well forget that. I can't raise that much money. 
I talked to Dick Hollison about putting in a post office, but he said he already had that, and then the government wouldn't allow but one in the town, so I couldn't well, get that. Uh, Abner, how would you like to go back in the store business? Huh? Uh, store business? Yeah, that's about the only thing you know anything about. Well, I thought some about that too, Long, but I just decided I never wanted to go in competition again, you and Dick both. Well, what I had in mind, I, don't... <laughs> I thought maybe you... Well, I... How would you like to go in partners with me again? Uh, you mean, uh, <laughs> tearing a jot them down store? Oh, why, sure. <laughs> uh, I never had no idea that you'd do that. Oh, why, we could take that money we made out of the circus and put in some modern improvements here, have an up-to-the-minute store. Good. Why, sure, put in some of them wire baskets that runs on them wires all over the store. Yeah. You know, when somebody buys something, you put it in a basket and it goes off summers, and when it comes back, it's all rocked hey, up. Hey, doggy, that's a sounding good Why, right? with all that money, we can have one of the finest stores there are in this part of the county. Yeah, but... Only thing, I ain't got enough money to buy no half interest anymore. You don't need a cent, Abner. Instead uh, of dividing that money up, twist it, we'll improve the store with it, and you'll own a half interest in it. I will. Why, we'll be 50 50 partners, same as you've always been, if you'll just come back with me. And from here out, we're sticking to the store business. Well, it looks as though the partnership of Edwards and Peabody has been reestablished. And now, I want to take a minute or so. To answer questions which many of our radio audience have asked us lately about the Harlech Weight Control Plan. Questions about how the plan works and how Harlech, which is such a fine bodybuilding, nourishing food, can actually help anyone reduce. Well, here's the answer. By taking Horlicks instead of a heavy lunch at noon, you cut down on your caloric intake. By cutting down on the calories, you can cut down those excess pounds that you've been so worried about. Now, the reason that Horlicks enables you to go without a big noonday meal is this. Horlicks is a well-balanced food that in itself gives you ample, sustaining nourishment without excess calories. Horlicks never lets you down. That's why the plan is so essentially safe as well as effective. By the way, I'd be glad to answer some other night any further questions that you may have. In the meantime, if you haven't any Horlicks in the house, you can get some from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. <laughs>